Hey, it's Ben here, and here in Final Cut Pro, we're going to have a look at how we can create perfect shape masks with some of the built-in tools. So we're going to just drag a video down here onto our timeline, and if we're using our shape mask, we'll come across to our effects here across on the right. We'll come down to our masks and keying, and basically we have a number of different masks that are available to us here. So in particular, we're going to be having a look at the draw mask and the shape mask for a couple different features here. So we'll drag our shape mask on top of our video here. And what we're really looking to do is to create either a perfect circle, a perfect rectangle. And basically in Final Cut Pro, this small white circle at the top left here is what you have to work with. So we can kind of move this and basically eyeball the circle. But we're going to have a look at a more accurate way of doing this. Now to do this, we're going to be using a free plugin um, called Grids and Guides basically overlays that we can add into Final Cut Pro. And we're gonna use and overlay a circle, a triangle, and a couple of other different shapes just to look at how we can create nice mask shapes within Final Cut Pro. So we'll jump back into Final Cut Pro, downloaded this already, and actually we'll delete from our video here the shape mask. So essentially to load these shapes in, we're gonna to go to view and choose custom overlay, and then we're gonna add a custom overlay. And what we're looking for in our grids and guides shape is our circle. We've got some four by three grids, we've got some six column grids, and if we go down, we have some basic shapes. So we've got our number 12 here, which is a circle. We'll open this up and it's gonna display on screen. So now you can see we've got a circle to mask to. So if we pull our shape mask back onto our clip, then you can see we've actually got something that we can map to when we're working in Final Cut Pro. Now we don't have the snapping that we'd have in applications like Illustrator, but this is gonna let us get pretty close and close enough, I think, for what most people will need. So you can see as we move in, we're gonna create that perfect circle. And when we lock in here, you can see when we have the width and height equal, the circle is gonna be perfect. So it's basically about getting the top and bottom and left and right of this circle in the right spot. So essentially that's how to work with a circle. So we can add those shapes in there. So now you can see if we select our transform controls, we can come to the corner and we can resize that circle, move it around, position it however we would like. We can do some cool things with this as well. If we turn off our transform controls, we could add another shape mask to our circle here. And if we use this second one, you can see we can move this to the left or right. And we have the option here, whether we wanna use the mask to mask out that shape or whether we wanna invert the mask. So if we're inverting the mask, we're gonna put this back in the middle of our original circle. We'll take off some of that feathering and then we'll just get this to map to that circle. A bit of tweaking here. And you can see we can actually use that mask to chop out a piece of the circle there as well. So basically we're able to combine shapes. And if we drag another video below that, you can see what we've done. We've actually cropped out a little bite of that circle on the right. So we can work quite nicely with different parts of the shape using a circle as a kind of starting point. So we could go even further with this. If we add another video on top, we could actually start to build this up. So I'm gonna grab my shape mask again. We'll drag this across. We'll map it to that circle. So when the shape mask first adds, it will add right to the middle. So it's easy to map to that circle. And then we'll use the transform controls to move this video across to the right. And then we'll cut a bigger chunk out of this. So now if we come back to our shape mask, we'll do the same thing again. We'll add a second mask to this shape. I'm gonna turn off my transform controls and then we can move this second mask again and we'll chop out a bit of that tower on the right as well. So I'm gonna invert my mask again and we'll remove the feathering there, get this to snap nicely to the circle. So we're still eyeballing it, but we're using that circle as a, a guide which is a pretty good guide to work with for the 
accuracy that we need here. So again, you can see once we have that set up, you can see basically we're able to use that circle to start to play around with the shapes. We can start to layer these up, start to create some nice layered video effects, some nice composites there with that little bit of movement. We get some interesting new spaces opening up within the design of the video. So we don't just have circles here. If we go to view and show custom overlay, we can add another custom overlay. This time we'll scroll down and we'll add our triangle. We'll open this up. So again, we're gonna get another shape overlay. You can see our circles are working quite nicely there. Let's add in this video, this alleyway. And this time with this alleyway, we're gonna transform this down just a little bit first so it kind of snaps a bit more into that triangle. We're gonna try and center the, the middle of this alleyway to the center of the triangle so we get nice kind of geometric synergy there. This time we're going to grab the draw mask, we'll drag this on, turn off our transform controls down here at the bottom left, and now you can see we can add those control points at each corner of the triangle. So without any external plugins we can get these really accurate shapes, and obviously you can download and use the overlays for free or create your own. We can play around with the layers so I'll look at where we're going to get some nice overlap between these different types of shapes and really build them up nicely. We also have some other types of overlay in here as well. I'm just going to use the position tool to move this a little way down the timeline. We're going to start to create some new layers a bit further down the timeline. And I'm going to jump back to my select tool or tap A. And this time with the overlays, we're going to go to view, choose custom overlay. And we're going to add a horizontal split in here. So these are some basic splits that you can add. And what we'll do is we'll zoom out to 50%. And basically, we're going to use the, the draw mask here on this video to basically map to these splits. Okay, now obviously, you don't need the guides there to do it, but it can be useful if you're wanting to kind of keep some consistency in your edits. So, I'm going to drag down a video to pop behind there, and then we'll drag another video for the top portion. And this one will use the transform controls. We're going to pop this up in the top of our video here, and then we'll add a draw mask to that. So again, just we are zoomed out here just so we can see those edges. And again, we can create these nice collage like videos happening, but know that we've created it in a way that means we can keep some consistency in the way the splits of these different videos are laid out. Now, if we're working on these and we want to cut in other videos, then what we can do is I'm going to leave this bottom layer as is. So we'll drag another clip down here and we're going to select this first clip. We're going to go to edit and copy, select our clip that we've just dropped down to the timeline here, and we'll do edit and paste attributes. And then we're going to paste the draw mask effect from this first video to the second video. And what you can see now is that has matched nicely. Now, sometimes this doesn't work if you have videos of different sizes. So we'll grab another video here that I know to be a bit bigger. So we'll just trim this down so that it maps on there nicely. So this first video, if we look at the resolution, is 1920 by 1080. And this second video is 3840 by 2160, so it's a much larger video. So if I want to copy from here and paste the masking onto this second video, I'm actually going to go to File, New, and Compound Clip, and that is going to wrap this up into the same resolution as my edit here, which is 1920 by 1080. So now I can select this first clip, copy that, and then come to Edit and Paste Attributes, or Shift-Command-V, and we'll paste all of these effects and now that has mapped nicely into that space. So actually, let's just move these so they're a little bit offset. And so now if we come back to fit, we'll play this back. And you can see now I've got those nice cuts, but the edits work perfectly. And obviously, we might have some editing to do in terms of how these clips are linking together. So let's play this through. Got some nice movement on the bottom there. And then we move into some nice movement on the top. So you can see you can start to work with this using some of these geometric shapes and also some other things. Let's cut this in a bit sooner and you can see we've got some nice movement there. And that movement is kind of key to making this all flow really nicely.
So again, a nice quick overview of some different shapes that we can add. We'll just add one last video on the end here and then just look at one last shape. So I'm gonna use my position tool to drag this down. We'll drag this down to the timeline. And in here as well, we've got under our custom overlays, we have some five-sided and six-sided polygons. Again, shapes that you can't easily create straight away in Final Cut Pro, but then with the overlays and the draw mask, we can quickly draw dot to dot to these corners and get a good rendition of this. If you need to be super accurate, then we can always zoom right in to 400% and come along to these corners and start to move things around. So this is where this little red box that you might see sometimes in Final Cut Pro becomes useful when we want to zoom right in and move around our clip in Final Cut Pro to kind of work on the detail of things. So again, some nice features there using the overlays. You can obviously create your own custom overlays, but do go ahead and download the free ones that I've made available with a link below. And if you do have any questions, then please don't hesitate to get in touch. One thing you will want to do is when you are ready to export, make sure that you uncheck the custom overlays so they disappear. And you can see now we've got some nice different experiments there with these different clips flowing in different ways that we've used the custom overlays to work with and align. So hopefully this is a useful overview of how we can make that perfect circle, but also how we can use the custom overlays to create different elements in our designs in Final Cut Pro. And if you do have any questions, then please leave them in the comments below.